Ah, uh, the Victorian era. A time marked by the Industrial Revolution, societal change, literature, grave robbings, mummy unwrappings, and most importantly, literature. One crucial part of this social change during this time were changes in viewpoints on homosexuality. Although homosexuality was illegal during this time and punishable by jail, that didn't stop people from engaging in it and writers from writing about it. Many famous novels during this time have homosexual implications scattered throughout, yet hidden in a way that wouldn't be noticed by a homophobic, unaccepting audience. One of these authors includes the, includes the famous Oscar Wilde. Wilde was notoriously known for being openly homosexual and was punished for this during the Wilde libel trial in which he was charged with sodomy after being caught in a spicy relationship with a man named Lord Douglas. What's interesting about Oscar Wilde's writing is that it showcases various aspects of homosexuality. The relationship between Lord Henry and the younger Dorian Gray in the iconic novel is a clear parallel between Wilde and Lord Douglas's relationship. Although this homoerotic homo is hidden clearly within the text via wordplay, metaphors, and sexual historical references, such as Greek pederastia, it is still there. For example, throughout the novel, the attractive Dorian Gray is described as, use, as using feminine nouns over masculine ones. In the book, he is described by simple simp Basil Hal Halward as having finely curved scarlet lips and looking like a young Greek martyr, characteristics usually reserved for females. Oscar Wilde was also known for writing a homoerotic book called Telony, in which one of the gay characters named Sapphi commits suicide rather than reveal his sexuality after receiving an intercourse-related inflammation wound. Although this book was written in the 1800s, the shame the gay characters in this book have over being exposed as homosexuals is eerily similar to the shame many homosexuals faced during the AIDS epidemic, just as, just as much as it was during the Victorian era with diseases such as syphilis. Another novel during this time that discreetly delves into themes of homosexuality was Dracula by Bram Stoker. Count Dracula has a strangely close desire for Jonathan Harker, refusing to let him leave his castle and becoming protective of him when the female vampires try to penetrate his neck and suck his blood, screaming out, Before the last rush! Throughout the novel, blood is easily interchangeable with semen, and fangs are symbolic metaphors for phallicism. Coincidentally, Wilde was actually very close friends with Bram Stoker, who would go on to write Dracula a month after Wilde had been charged with sodomy. It is theorized that Stoker wrote Dracula as a way to fend out his own fears of exposure as a homosexual. This theory is backed up by homoerotic letters found that Stoker had written to one Walt Whiteman. Ironically, Stoker became one of many people demanding that homosexual writers be imprisoned in 1912. Kinda sus if you ask me. <laughs> the last novel I will be discussing is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson clearly uses wordplay throughout the book to hint at the character, Henry Jekyll, being secretly homosexual. In the book, it mentions that Jekyll, an unmarried middle-aged man, has a house that is described as Blackmail House on Queer Street. The character Utterson dreams of Hyde entering Jekyll's bedroom and having sex with him as Blackmail from the past scene. Imagery of forced penetration using phallic-like objects to open rooms, closets, and cabinets are used throughout the book as well. This use of suggestive words and double meanings mixed with a suspected sexual relationship between Jekyll and Hyde adds homoeroticism to the novel. Letters from Robert Louis Stevenson hint at a potential relationship between Stevenson and J.M. Barry, author of Peter Pan. A letter found revealed that J.M. Barry wrote to Stevenson to quote, To be blunt, I have discovered that I love you, and if you had been a woman, then it ends. Whether Stevenson himself was homosexual or not, it was recorded that he was found attractive by both men and women, and was openly friends with people within the homosexual community. Overall, these authors were the ultimate trolls, 
and advocates for homosexuality in a society that hypocritically denounced it. The end.